Both Distilled Living. We are produced by Fascination Design. I believe we are on episode 52. We just have one cocktail for you this evening. This is one that uh, we were playing around with and actually um, did some variations on, but we're going to give you the basics. Um, we were looking for something new and interesting and different. Um, Hillary was like, oh, let's build something off vermouth. So I went to Imbibe, which has an entire chapter on vermouth drinks, which is why I went to this book. Um, so this is the Racket Club, um, which is this is really a dessert cocktail. Uh, it's really delicious. And it is a gin cocktail, not a bourbon cocktail. But you could, once you see how it's constructed, you'd absolutely swap in a good bourbon. I would, I would go with a drier style, something with a lot of rye, because you have so much other sweet ingredients already. Um, it doesn't taste like a gin forward cocktail. The whole thing harmonizes absolutely beautifully, and it's really pretty easy to put together. Um, so I'm going to start out with this needs. Uh, oops, not that. This needs a nice fancy uh, coupe glass, sugar glass, something. Um, and you want to go ahead and show that. And then uh, I'm going to build it in a slightly different order than the book says, um, just because this is the order that I'm used to building things in. So orange bitters, I'm using scrappies because I really like their orange bitters. It's going to be two dashes. And then um, this was the best um, come to cocoa that we could get um, on short notice. So this is Gerlade, which actually turns out, oh, I'm trying to find, there's good lighting. Um, this is really quite good. Is a French import product. Um, great flavor. It's a little heavy on the sweetness, but you kind of expect that with the liqueur. A um, lot of good, strong, bitter character actually on the finish, which I really enjoy uh, out of a nice chocolate. Um, and then this is one bar spoon. Like, yay. Um, this is going to sweeten up the drink, especially as soon as we start tossing in some sweet vermouth. Um, and that's really all that you need, but it really creates some nice body uh, and it contrasts beautifully against everything else that we got going on there. So now I'm going to use an ounce and a half of my sweet vermouth and an ounce and a half of Plymouth gin and it just it does call for Plymouth gin specifically um, and Plymouth gin is the only Plymouth gin left. So Plymouth Gin is actually technically a style, right? Uh, there's only one company making it? It's a, I think, I, my understanding region. is it's a region and also a style. Um, and then this is, you know, Manhattan Martini style. So we're just going to give it, uh, I, this one, uh, longer integration time is better, like a lot of your stirred cocktails. Um, just just let it, let it go. Give it some time. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Just sit here and stir a drink. I think the audio cuts out if you stop talking because it takes the jingling in the glass to uh, as, as background noise. So it's probably totally silent there for a second. Um, but no, we're still here. It's just, I'm going to drink this. I'm going to really enjoy this. So I'm going to spend the time to do this right. Um, Cause I was actually really impressed by this. Uh, Hillary did a really interesting variant on this uh, where she used uh, just inverted um, are two minor ingredients. Um, so she used uh, a bar spoon of uh, dry curacao uh, that we've used on the show before, uh, which is a really, really delicious uh, orange liqueur that we really like. Um, and then two dashes of uh, Scrappy's, no, Scrappy's? Scrappy's. Scrappy's chocolate bitters. Came out really beautifully well. I think I did a variation um, on that also with bourbon. Yes, totally sub in bourbon and it's fantastic. Honestly, you probably don't have to do quite as much work to integrate it if you have the bourbon. Um, it's just that juniper really needs to fall underneath all of the other flavors um, instead of being overpowering and super strong on the nose. I'm still smelling a lot of the juniper. Like everything is starting to integrate, but as long as the juniper is the top note, this isn't right. Um, so I'm gonna wait this a little bit. Nothing else to do. Sorry, just kept sitting watch. Can you talk about gins at all? Uh, I don't know much about gins. I like gin. We've done a little research on uh, uh, Old Tom. Yes, Old Tom is a style. It's still a little juniper, but not nearly as juniper forward as London Dry is my understanding. Um, and it kind of bridges between London Dry and uh, Jennifer. Um, and we did pick up an Old Tom actually, which we'll, we'll probably break out and experiment with on the show at some point soon. And then uh, what's the other style that I'm missing? Old Tom, uh, London, London Dry. Dry and uh, Plymouth and Jennifer. Those are the four. Okay. There are a whole lot of subcategories, I'm sure, but those are kind of the big ones. 
and I grabbed the wrong Hawthorne strainer. Um, this normally gets uh, an orange peel. I grabbed the wrong Hawthorne strainer. Okay. Um, just commit to it and pour. That's what I'm doing. I'm just, that's why I'm having to use two hands. It's because I grabbed the wrong strainer. Um, man, it's not look good. It's so good. Um, Notice that it doesn't look like a gin anymore. <sighs> Looks like a Manhattan, um, which is kind of a gin orange chocolate Manhattan kind of thing. Um, yeah, and uh, I don't know what I was saying before. I got distracted by the Hawthorne Strainer thing. Oh, normally this has an orange twist over the top. Uh, I just didn't have an orange handy, so didn't do that. Um, and then there it is. So that is the Racket Club, which is a really, really beautiful slow sipping, but in this case, dessert style drink. So would you say that anybody who likes the dark chocolate and orange yes. uh, sort of chocolates yes. that come out about this time of year mm -hmm. will probably like this drink? The, so it got a little bit more bitterness to it. But, it does. But it also has enough of the sweet to balance that. Yes. Uh, it's a great sweet bitter balance. Um, it doesn't, it's not cloying, although it is very sweet. The longer it sits, the better it tastes. Um, the juniper really, and the gin, and the botanicals add a complexity and a depth that's really, really interesting. It's some, some interesting floral character, which we don't normally integrate into foods very often. Um, I, I can't find, I mean, it's, it's like the orange chocolate, but just like more interesting, almost like it's like some tea character, uh, like floral components have like almost like green tea or something like that. It's really, really distinctly interesting. Um, I really like it. It's really good. It's, it's good. delicious. Sorry. That's our drink for tonight. And next week, we'll probably be a little bit more prepared. Um, I don't think we did half the things we normally do for this, but we had a break last week, except that the break was really like catch up week. So we get into the uh, crazy Christmas season or holiday season for a lot of companies. Yes. Um, but next week, we'll be back at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, possibly with a couple different drinks for you, possibly with a recorded video of another bartender for you, not entirely sure yet. It just gets weirder and weirder, but we're also getting more people out into set, uh, home studios too. Mm -hmm. So good quality lighting still, good quality mics, good quality cameras, but yeah. getting people safer. Yeah, yeah, that's been really important. Um, we, our virtual bourbon tastings are now distributed, um, even though very often it takes three, four, five people to run a virtual bourbon tasting. Um, Hillary's done a great job creating remote uh, operations for the entire production, um, which is really important, especially when we're doing six, eight, probably 10 a night uh, on these virtual bourbon tastings. I don't think we've hit 10 a night. I don't think we have either yet, but I, I, I feel like the potential is there. Um, so we'll see. I, I, it's going to break everybody. <laughs> no, it's not. We <laughs> have <fine>. we have <laughs> at least eight studios. It'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> Just bring in more people remotely, which is, that's how 2020 works. All right. Good night. Cheers, everybody.